You guys, I have such an exciting announcement today. My 2022 through 2023 planners are here. If you remember, if you've been following since late last year, you know that I designed and developed these sewing planners. And I was so thrilled with the response that I decided let's keep it going. So I did a bit of a redesign, I will say. Nothing in there is, the information is not that different, but it's all a little bit cleaner, a little bit prettier, a little bit just easier to kind of follow along. And I am just thrilled with how they turned out. So based on your feedback, I also switched printing platforms from Amazon's print on demand to a company called Lulu because Lulu does coil bound and Amazon does not. So you now have a coil bound planner that will lay flat on your table. And then there's also an ebook version as well for all of the digital planner girls that are out there. So Lulu does not allow you to look through the book, the planner. It doesn't allow you to see inside, whereas Amazon does. So I thought I would use this opportunity to kind of walk you guys through the planner, show you each and every page so you know exactly what you're gonna get when you order your planner. I don't even have mine physically here yet. That's how like brand new, like this just, just launched. Um, so I can't walk you through it personally, like with me, but with the physical copy in my hand, but I can show you um, on my screen share kind of what all the pages look like. Um, and you can get a feel for how you'll be able to use this planner. My kind of goal behind even coming up with this idea was how can I help you guys not lose your sojo, stay on track with all your projects, not add to your work in progress pile, stay organized, stay focused all year long. So let's take a look at the brand new planners. They're July, 2022 through June, 2023. All right, so this is our back cover on the left and then our front cover on the right. And then throughout this process, you'll just have to imagine, you know, the coil in the middle here. Um, but yeah, this is the front cover design. I think it's super, super cute. I love like all the little like vintage sort of sewing machine notions that we have on here. And you'll start to see some of these repeated throughout the um, planner design as well. The whole thing sort of has like a bit of like a mid-century kind of vibe to it, which I think is just really cute and fun and kind of a nod to, you know, the history of sewing in general. And then we have this page here where you can, you know, fill out your name. Then we have some information about me in case you stumble upon this planner and have no idea who I am. <laughs> All right. And then we get into like the guts of the planner. So every month we have a um, quote that I've chosen that kind of speaks to creativity. It speaks to, you know, never giving up, you know, diligence, failure and success and some different things that I think really apply to the craft of sewing. So you'll have one of those every month. And then we get into our monthly calendar. So we've got the full calendar here. And then you can see in the sidebar, I added a few things this time versus last time. Um, we still have our little don't forget section, kind of like what's most important about the month, whether that be specific projects you have to work on, deadlines, you know, anything like that. And then we have important dates. Um, and I added in actual holidays, US holidays, and then some of those like really fun sort of wacky holidays, like who knew July 25th was Thread the Needle Day. <laughs> and then you can write in birthdays, anniversaries, you know, whatever you want in the lines that follow. And then we've got a little shopping section. And then if you've got to run any errands, you can put those here as well. So now we are looking at the first two pages of the project planning set. First, we have our measurements. Now, I think it's super important to take your measurements every single time you start a new project. I do that even if I'm making the projects like one week after the next. I don't know why really, <laughs> other than maybe it helps my brain get in the mindset of measurements and fitting. And if I do it 
every time, then it's not like a year goes by when I haven't taken my measurements. You know, if I just do it really quick every time, then we're good. But obviously you could just fill them in, the ones that you know off the top of your head, the main ones, your bust, your waist, and your low hip. And then if you're working on something like a crop top, for example, and you need to know your high waist or something with a sleeve and you need to know your bicep. You can take those specific measurements for that specific project and fill them in here. All these, obviously all of these below the low hip are for like a pant um, or legging or shorts or something like that. All right, so the sewing project page itself has a section for inspiration where you can either doodle something, you can take a photo of it and paste it in here or tape it in here. You can just write out a description if you want. And then this is your section to kind of like brainstorm which patterns to use based on your inspiration. Um, so let's say you see something on a TV show and you're like, you know, that Marvelous Mrs. Maisel coat was so stunning. Um, I want to try and make something like that. So you would put that in here and then you would research some big four pattern options or maybe indie pattern options or maybe both. Um, and then once you have that, then you can start brainstorming fabric. Um, you can write out the store that you like. So the Mrs. Maisel coat is like a navy pinstripe. So you would do a Google search for Navy pinstripe and then the stores where you find the ones that you like, you would write out the store, the SKU number so you can find the exact fabric again really easily and then a description of the fabric or maybe like, I really like this one except the pinstripe is bigger than, you know, the inspiration or something along those lines. So there's lots of options for that and then your notions list is obviously based off your patterns as well. And then do I need to buy these notions or not? Um, you just check off these little boxes here. And then any other notes that you might have, you can put today's date, which really starts to turn this into like a journal, like a chronological journal of your projects. And then when you hope to have it done by, if you're going on a trip, if you have an event, you know, you can put that in here. Okay, next we have our to-do list. So this is very similar to what is in like my sew along workbooks and things like that. Um, buying fabric, buying li lining, buying notions, all based off of this section here um, in your project planner. And then if it's an indie pattern, we have to print it, maybe tape it or send it to a printer. Um, the sizing. So now we're going to move into like what size do I pick? So you would need to fill out your fast fit workbook and then determine which size to cut. And we have that information here as well. You can write down your measurements, bust, waist, hip, bicep. You can even write down the specific size of the patterns if you want to there. And then if you've got, you know, additional measurements, like for example, the thigh and knee and ankle from the pants, you can fill that in here. So I would most likely just write the size that I'm going to cut with some sort of general like grading situations happening here. Then you're going to cut out your pattern pieces of your, the actual pattern, not fabric, but the pattern pieces. We're going to tissue fit that um, either on a dress form or on your body. And then I thought this was really cute um, about making a muslin. Ha ha. Yeah, right. I mean, sometimes, yeah, it calls for a muslin, but I think most often we are trying to skip that step as much as possible. But once you get the fit right, um, you've tissue fitted it, you've done a muslin, if you're choosing to do that, then you can cut your fashion fabric. You sew it, you add your finishing details and your label. You're writing out the pattern here. We are transferring the shopping list. Uh, from the previous page and then any pattern alterations that you need to make based on your tissue fitting and your muslining, you can do that here as well. Then we move into the journal. So how do you rate this pattern? Out of five stars, this pattern is five out of five. It was perfect. I love it. I want to make a million more. It is tried and true. Or this was terrible. I could not get it to fit. You know, whatever. Um, you're trying to rate the pattern and not necessarily the garment that you made from the pattern. Like, would you want to make this pattern again? If you just had some, like, you know, sewing fail and the project didn't turn out well, I don't know about rating that, but we can definitely rate the pattern. 
And then some ideas that you have for a future version. So if we're going back to our pinstripe coat inspired by the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, maybe your next version you want to make it a cropped coat instead of like a knee length coat. Or maybe you want to try it out of a different type of fabric. Um, you can write all of that here. Fit updates for next time, especially if you did not make a muslin. Um, after, I don't know about you guys, but after I finish making a project, even if I've tissue fitted and done a muslin, sometimes when you're wearing it, you just notice something that you didn't in the original fitting process. So you'd want to mark those here. And then hack ideas. So how I'd want to hack this coat, um, maybe I would want to turn it into a vest. Maybe I would want to turn it into a oh, I don't know, like a shirt dress instead of like an actual coat. You can put all your hack ideas here, any final notes you have on the pattern, and then this is kind of how you celebrate finishing a project. You try it on, you do a little happy dance in the mirror. Don't tell me that you don't look at yourself in the mirror and do a little like shimmy shake. Um, you can show it off to whoever is at home or your friends. Then you wear it out with pride, you twirl around, you take it out on the town, you maybe post it to the internet, strike a pose in it, any of these things that you do to kind of celebrate that you finished sewing a garment um, you can do all of those here so this uh, journaling section or this project planning section these four pages are repeated four times throughout the journal each each month it's repeated four times then we go into our month in review so this is where we can write down our completed projects was it a work in progress was it a stash buster that way we're kind of trying to like look back at the month and if all we've done is so new projects that's great but maybe we want to try and add in some works in progress or if we've only bought new fabric for these projects maybe we want to try and add in some stash busters so just kind of like a quick glance you can see how am i doing managing these two things that can kind of always be troublesome for us as sewists in general always wanting to sew something brand new and always wanting to like buy new fabric for it right and then we have our works in progress. So this is things that we started but we didn't finish. I only gave you three lines because I know that you know that I am very bad at works in progress and I do not need to be adding a collection of them every single month. So you get three works in progress every month, how much of it you completed, and then uh, set yourself a deadline of when you want to complete it. And you can put that in your, um, in your planner, uh, where is it? Here, the completion deadline at for the next month. So when we get into, for this example, August, you can put these in August's first um, few projects. That way you know that you're getting them done. And then just some overall thoughts this month and goals for next month. Maybe your goals are to sew more stash busters or to finish all of these works in progress. Then we get another quote, right? and then another calendar, all right? And then we go through the whole process again where you get the um, project planning pages four times before we get to another month in review. So this is August's month in review and then September's calendar, all right? So it goes through this process July 2022 all the way, let's see if it's easier to do it this way, all the way to june of 2023 lots of pages i think it's like 244 pages or something like that but we get to july's calendar for next year i'm sorry june's calendar for next year june 2023 and then all of your june projects and then your june month in review is what ends the book so that's the most thorough in-depth <laughs> uh, flip through of this planner that I could possibly give you. Um, and I hope you really like it. So there you have it. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. I think the redesign turned out so, so, so cute. And I think that, like I said, it's a little bit more cleaner and a little bit simpler to kind of follow along. Um, and the coil bound is going to be a game changer. I just know it. So I hope that you will go check them out at Lulu, um, my Lulu store, I guess is what you call it. And um, I have a link for that in the description box here. It'll take you straight there where you can shop both the coil bound uh, paperback version and the ebook. If you get it, let me know. Mm.
I'm so excited. Any questions about it that you have at all, leave them in the comment section below and I'm happy to answer them. But yay for new planners. I love a new planner. Okay. I'll see you guys soon.